Thank you. Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and oftentimes, sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and well, and well-being and health and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on the bright side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We want to help you change your life today. If you're dealing with a chronic illness, a progressive illness, a a CDD, a chronic degenerative disease, and probably one out of four or five Americans is dealing with such a disease, what does that say about our culture? If you're dealing with an issue, a health challenge, and your doctor's told you you're going to be on medication for the rest of your life, not, unless you have a transplant perhaps, If you're dealing with a chronic degenerative disease and you're being medicated for it, please understand you are not condemned to being drugged for the rest of your life. We just gotta figure out what's going on and reverse the process. And a key component of that, of course, is nutritional supplementation. We can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you wanna purchase any of the Longevity products you're advertised or recommended on the program, call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or check out our websites criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, and pharmacistben.com. And for those of you interested in skin health products, if you're not happy with your skincare products, if you want the absolute best skincare products you could use, if you want treatments instead of skincare, skin treatments instead of skincare, please check out truthtreatments.com and take a specially long look at our retinol 5% gel, truthtreatments.com. We also have a blog, uh, also a newsletter that you can sign up for, truthtreatments.com. All right, so we are talking, oh, by the way, we have a guest coming on in the bottom of the hour. Uh, Claudia Kalb will be talking about the book Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol was a hoarder, which is a really interesting book. Uh, She talks about um, celebrities, uh, cultural icons, Princess Di and Howard Hughes and Marilyn Monroe and their various health issues. Claudia is a science writer. She's written a lot of stuff for Newsweek. She's actually written on autism a lot. And I'm going to see if I can get Claudia to, to digress a little bit and talk about autism and vaccines. I think she has some interesting takes on that. In any case, uh, she'll be on in the bottom of the hour. And if you have phone calls, please call us in our next segment, 844-236-6010. And we'll get you on in our next segment. We'll have Claudia Kalb on at the bottom of the hour. We're talking inflammation. We're talking blood clotting and coagulation. And this is so, 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 so important. We have an epidemic of coagulated blood, uh, of blood coagulation issues in this country. And there's no way, no way you are not going to get some kind of illness, degenerate to break down disease if you start to go into the uh, down the road of blood clotting and blood coagulation this is so important blood inflammation arthritis of the blood that's one of the key ideas here is that all the diseases we have are basically the same thing they're all the inflammatory defensive immune system run amok and it's it, it's not a very uh, it's not a very large it's not a very uh, uh, far, it's not a far jump from inflammatory conditions in the tissue, in the bone, in the joints, in the, uh, in the connective tissue primarily, to the blood. And the blood, by the way, is a form of connective tissue. So clotting of the blood is arthritis of the blood, and it's extremely common, and it proceeds, and it is a primary, primary component of all CDD, chronic degenerative disease. So doesn't it make sense to figure out how to clean the blood? Of course it does. Oh yeah, kidney disease. 
I can't tell you how many letters I get a week on kidney disease, on polycystic kidney disease, on people, people on dialysis, and what do I do about my kidneys? And my doctor says I'm going to be on dialysis. Listen, the kidney filters the blood, okay? So if the kidney filters the blood and we got this epidemic of blood, dirty blood, of course we're going to have a subsequent problem with kidney disease. Same with eye disease. Same with male sexual function. If you have dirty blood, it's going to be hard for, uh, for you to have an erection. For, if you're a guy, it's going to be hard to get blood going. This is the problem with the sexual, uh, one of the major problems with male sexual performance issues, so-called ED, is poor circulation. We call it, say, poor circulation. We're talking about dirty blood for the most part. So if you've ever heard of that term, they don't say it anymore, poor circulation. They used to call it poor circulation. Now they call it vascular disease. That's the latest term for it. But it's basically the same thing, and it's all dirty blood. Dirty blood leads to inflamed blood and clotted blood. From the journal Octa Anesthesiologica Taiwanica, March 2015, coagulation abnormalities in sepsis. Doctors call dirty blood sepsis. Now, to be fair, sepsis is really bacterially infected dirty blood, but whatever. The bacteria represent a form of dirt. Food particles, microparticles, or can do the same thing that bacteria can do. They can initiate the same kind of clotting response. So, acta, uh, coagulation abnormalities in sepsis. From Science Daily, fibrin, that's clotting protein, fibrin is a key to protection during sepsis, is a key to protection. This is one of the ways the body protects itself from dirty blood. It forms clots. Clotting is actually a protection mechanism. The blood will clot so that it doesn't get distributed everywhere because it's dirty. So the body says, okay, that stuff's dirty. We're going to slow things down a little bit until we can clean it up. But it doesn't know. The body, the brilliant body, the, the loving, beautiful body of ours, it doesn't know that it's being attacked every day. So it thinks, okay, if we clot the blood a little bit, we can take care of the problem. We can clean the problem up. But because the blood is, is con there's a stream of toxicity coming into the blood. The blood is constantly toxic. It doesn't have a chance to clean up. So this ordinarily protective response becomes, uh, becomes a problem, becomes a cause of a severe problem. From uh, Current Pharmaceutical Design, 2008, the coagulation cascade in sepsis, intravascular inside the, the blood vessels, and check this out, extravascular outside the blood vessel, clots are characteristic findings in patients with sepsis. From this German, Bering Institute, Metilunger, I think you say it, Septicemia, dirty blood, is frequently ac accompanied by changes in cellular coagulation systems and by microclot formulation. It's all over the place. Why? If your doctor has put you on a blood thinner for some kind of issue you're having with AFib or, or, or some kind of uh, uh, circulatory problem, please understand that your blood is clotting for a reason. And drugs that force the blood to thin while they may be necessary in an emergency are playing with fire. That's why you've all heard warfarin is rat poison. Everybody's heard that. Coumadin, warfarin is rat poison. What do you think that means? It means that warfarin is one of the most deadly, toxic, poisonous drugs you could ever use. Why? Because it c compels the blood to thin. It forces the blood to thin. There is no system more complicated, more complex and that involves more steps than coagulation, blood clotting. It is tightly regulated. And that's saying something. There is no system in the human body that is more tightly regulated than the flow of blood, than the thickness and thinness of the blood, than the circulation of the blood. Obviously, when you think about it, what system is more important than the blood? So if you have a, a fundamental system like the circulatory system, the blood, and it's so important, any changes in there are going to be tightly regulated. The body doesn't like things changed. That's why when you force your, drug, your blood to thin with a pharmacological agent, you are playing with fire. Now, in an emergency, that's one thing. But for long term, that is irresponsible, bad medicine, lazy medicine. And we pay the price. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Hi. 
Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm pharmacist Ben. We have Claudia Kalb coming up at the bottom of the hour. Her book, Andy Warhol, was a hoarder inside the minds of history's great personalities. I thought this was really interesting. Great, really interesting, kind of fun read. Princess Di. Loved Princess Di. Abraham Lincoln. Frank Lloyd Wright, the famous architect. George Gershwin. Dostoevsky. Albert Einstein was autistic. Check that out. Autism's really interesting stuff. We should do a show on that sometime. Autism and vaccines, autism rates increasing, autism and gluten. Anyway, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Order products right off the website. And if you want to purchase any of our truth treatment products, please go to truthtreatments.com and check out our truth balm, truth serum, omega-6 healing cream, and retinol 5% gel. Got tons of letters here from Dr. Wallach. Only have uh, got uh, got kind of an empty board here, except for Carl the Truth Raider. What's up, Carl? How you doing, man? Good morning, pharmacist Ben. This is part two here. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm kind of putting you on the spot on this one. Okay, but right. it's a it's a commercial, and and you know the, you hear them all the time, and it's as what I've heard in uh, the medical community, it's part of the quote game unquote. Uh, have you been damaged by Xarelto? Call 1-800-BAD-LIVER. You know, all this what kind of what does that tell me about that? <laughs> what, what does that mean, Carl? What, what, is, what is your take about all of that? I mean, I, those it's are manipulative. Classes, it's, aren't they? It's called meme crafting. You know, when I, I remember doing, I read this book called Viruses of the Mind. I'm trying to think of who wrote it. A guy named Brody, Richard Brody, wrote it. I read it in the 90s, Viruses of the Mind. And that was one of those first introduced to this concept of memes, M-E-M-E-S. Now, you hear right. memes all the time nowadays, but this was the early 90s, and I hadn't heard that before. It actually comes from Richard Dawkins, who wrote a book called The Selfish Gene, where he talks mm-hmm. about how genes in the body uh, really repeat themselves and, and uh, reproduce themselves independent of the owners of those genes, us. In other words, genes have a, we just obey our genetics. This was, this was a Dawkins' premise, is that genes run the world, run biology. But he also came up with this idea of memes. And he said that there are, in the culture, there are thoughts and ideas that repeat themselves over and over again. And they don't care about the owners of those thoughts and ideas. They just want to repeat themselves. You follow what I'm saying? So, so they're in the, they don't give a crap about us. The genes don't give a crap about Carl. Okay, this is right. Dawkins' hypothesis. The, the genes don't care about the owner, and he came up with this idea about memes, which Richard uh, Brody wrote, uh, elaborated on in the book Viruses of the Mind, and he said that these ideas in the culture don't care about the owners of those ideas. They just want to repeat themselves. Does that make sense? So it's like they're like viruses, and okay. I don't have time to talk about viruses, but viruses are super cool, and they do the same thing. It's like a virus on your computer. It doesn't care that you need to you know, write your letters or have your business on your computer. It's just going to repeat its uh, reproduce itself independent of whether you like it or not or your computer likes it or not and so there's this battle between memes and people ideas and people and we have these ideas in the culture that are uh, antagonistic to our well-being you follow me with this oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. and now these are memes now there's actually evil people who create these memes just like there's evil people who create viruses in your computer you know yeah. how you get I don't know if you ever got a virus in your computer but you want to you know you want to hurt somebody who did that why would they I do something on that then. right why would somebody be so malicious well you have mean crafters in the advertise, we call them spin doctors, or we call them advertisers, or we call them marketers, and they work for some of the biggest companies in the world, and they manipulate, their job is to insert a virus into a culture so that they can profit off of it. And one of those, in the medical world, is filled with these memes, filled with these mind viruses, filled with these parasites, and there are people who get paid big bucks to create them. Now, what is that, does that sound nice to you? Does that want to, oh. well, that's who's writing oh. the Zarelto commercial, all right? Like they say, okay, theory. this is what they say. They say, oh, we know that people are older, so they'll like Arnold Palmer, and now middle-aged people are also, and Arnold Palmer's one of the spokespeople, and they say, oh, middle-aged people, they also use, they also got dirty blood yeah. and it's clotting, so we'll get Kevin Nealon on there, and then we'll get the, <laughs> then we'll get the Southerners, because there's a lot of Southerners on these drugs, so we'll get a race car driver, and then we'll get them to talk about how wonderful our drug is. This is how they think. Yes. This is how advertising's done, you know? Right. And, and so they, they, ha- they know all the ways to manipulate us into believing things. And yep. there are, it's one thing to have a meme to get you to, uh, 